Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin. Sayyidina wa habibina wa syafi'ina wa nuri kulubina. Wa qurati ya'inina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Allahumma salli wa salim ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Fi kudi lahadatin abada ala ni'amillahi wa afdalihi. Allahumma atina min ladunka rahmah. Wa alimna min ladunka ilma. Subhanaka la ilmana illa ma'allamtana. Innaka antal alimul hakim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nawaina ta'allima wa ta'anim wa tazakura wa tazkir. Wa nafa' wa nintifa' wa nifada wa nistifada. والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدا ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع نطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لرني ومشرب صافي الهني وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لرني ومشرب صافي الهني Ya Wahab, Ya Ghani, Allahumma, inna nas'adika la'ilma ladini ya mashraba sa'afiyan hani. Ya Wahab, Ya Ghani, wa sallallahu ala sallina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin, amin, 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 ya rabbil alamin. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Let us continue with our class, the hadith class. So, mashallah, and surely if you have your etiquette with you, your etiquette with you, Um, if you see work, um, I have nice smells around you, and we are we are going to uh, be listening to the words of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, Bismillah. We're continuing from the hadith that we left off left off on. We were on basically um on I think on on Wednesday, right? So. Um, that hadith we were on was and was it was the ninety first hadith. Now the ninety first hadith. Um, yes, we on this hadith. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna explain the second part of the hadith. Um, inshallah, and then we move on to the next hadith. Right. So just a disclaimer from uh, I mean, this is just a note we just mentioned from uh Wednesday's class, right? Because we spoke about keeping good company. You know, keeping good company with. Um, the righteous, you know, and keeping the company of your teachers, and I, and I, and I, and I mentioned, you know, about people um always staying away, right, from teachers, and that is actually uh bad etiquette, right, to actually stay away, um, from a person when they have made themselves up uh, in front of you, you know, available, right, for you to keep their close company, right. So and and it and that sometimes people always have this blameworthy, um, it is a very blameworthy idea that oh, you know, they don't want to be disturbed. If people don't want to be disturbed, they will very well go to their private quarters or they'll go to the room, right? If they don't want to be disturbed. Um, if they are in public space, right, high chances they don't mind if you come and you just sit and you just, you know, keep your company. Right. If if they don't want to be disturbed, right, they will actually you you will see from their body language, you will see from you know, uh from the way they would they, they hold themselves, right, that they don't want to be disturbed. Right. Or if you come and they move away from you, right? So then there's a sign. Don't don't don't, don't chase them. I don't follow them around. Right. But if you see they move away, right? That means you don't want to be near anyone at that point in time, right? So just just respect that. Um. Now, nah, I but but uh but but the, the point of this hadith, it is for us to seek out good company. Right. The importance of seeking out, um, good company. Um. Now. Nah, uh, I can't remember why there was a question about hugging last in the last lesson, um, because it is not mentioned here in the hadith, so I don't know where the question came from. Um, I'm not sure why there was that question. Um, but just to make it clear, and because I think one of my students asked me thereafter, you know, about the sunnah of it. Um, just to make it clear, uh, that it is there's no nothing wrong, right? If you want, if nothing wrong, if people like to hug each other, it's up to them. And you know, if they want to hug each other, it's up to them. Um, there's nothing wrong with that per se. Um, but it's just that, uh, if you want to speak about the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? That um, when when someone comes back from a travel, then that is a Sunnah um of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? To actually hug that person. 
um, it's a sunnah, you know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and also that he would do so with those who, who are beloved to him, right? So he would do so specifically, and not to everyone, because many people came back from Habsha, right? Um, from whoever senior, right? But he, um, he, he went directly to Sina Ja'far, who was his cousin, right? Someone who was beloved to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it um and, and 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 so there's no prohibition at all. Just to make myself clear, and there's no prohibition at all. You know, I'm just speaking about what has been narrated uh, from him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in his initial show of, you know, affection to some of his companions, right, to his companions. You know, mashallah. Um, and also just a disclaimer, right? Uh, I think I need to just mention all of these things just so that people don't uh, misunderstand. Um, and think these are rulings, right? Um, uh, when it is just, just simply, uh, it is just simply a, a preference, you know, or it is just that, um, you know, just because there is a narration that he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, um, hugged someone on on return of from the journey, right? Um, does not mean, right, that is the only time. You know, you can actually hug a person. It doesn't mean that. It just means that he did. He did so. You know, Subhanallah. And we're going. And I'm actually going through this kind of hadith with every every year too. Right, with regards to um what the Rasulullah did, you can follow what he did not do. Does not mean you can't do it. You can if you want to. It's up to you, right? But but what I would say, you know, for, um is to always be um respectful of people of people's preferences, right? Be respectful of people's body language and of their uh preferences. Not everyone. Uh, likes to be uh, touched and not everyone likes to be hugged, right? So to be respectful. And not everyone likes for random people to come up to them and hug them. Not everyone likes it, right? So to be respectful, right? So I'm just mentioning this because um, uh, I am one of those people. <laughs> so it's not a sunnah or whatsoever. It's not, you know, I, I, I'm not saying it's, it's from a ruling or whatever. It's just my own personal preference. I don't like people touching me. Right. And especially and I and I'm very I'm very selective, uh very, very selective, highly selective of regards to who um touches me <laughs> right or hugs me. So I I I am saying it very, very clear. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. Um I I, I kind of follow up with in this in this aspect. She does not like it. She does not like it when anyone touches her and kisses her and stuff like that. She doesn't like it. I know she tells she told me before. She's like, why do they keep kissing me on my cheeks and on my forehead? I don't like it. You know, she's like, all kinds of people, the random strangers. I don't know who they are. You know, and they're kissing and kissing and kissing. And then, and then she's like, she, she gets very upset. She gets very upset when people keep doing that. You know, but but because she she, she tried, has to be gracious, she won't say anything. But she will say to me afterward that uh, she doesn't like it. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm exactly that you have about. <laughs> I don't like it either. You know, mashallah. Um, except for me, for me, is this an exception of those who are 20 years younger than me or 20 years older than me? <laughs> so if you are 20 years older than me or 20 years younger than me, right? Uh, children or old hababas, right? So they can, old women, right? old women, um, aunties to me, right? Uh, marhaban, ahlan wa sahlan. <laughs> people who are my mother's age, right? Um, or my grandmother's age, right? Those people, I have no, I don't mind. And people who are young enough to be my children, I don't mind. But those who are my age, I mind. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I said I don't. I don't know why that that topic came up. Um, I I still don't know why. Um, uh, but I'm just gonna address it. Okay. So okay, continue with the hadith. I don't spend time um discussing that anymore. Um, continue with the hadith. Right, the similitude of uh of good company and that of bad company is that of the owner of musk and the one blowing the bellows. Right, the one who is um a a blacksmith. The owner of mask will either offer you some free of charge. We mentioned that will be um a companionship that is a very close companionship, right? And and uh, or you buy it from him that will be not so close but not so far either, right? And or you smell his present fragrance that will be you know an acquaintance or a far, uh, a far, uh, uh, I mean someone who you're not close to, right? But you're just enjoying, uh, their good company. As for the one who is a blacksmith, either he burns your clothes, meaning he harms you with his bad character, right? So you, so basically, you know, his bad character is afflicting you, right? So his rudeness or his, you know, bad mannerisms or his selfishness or his, you know, foulness and so on. It it hurts you. You are hurt by this person directly, or you know, you smell repugnant smell, meaning that you see him hurt other people, 
and you see of him bad character shown towards other people so it might not be towards you right but you see this 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 ugliness right that he's showing towards other people right so either way stay away from him because he's bad company the explanation of this hadith this hadith is also from the from jawami al-karim of the prophet wasalam. it is simple yet profound this parable is a perfect parable in many ways right from being an acquaintance to a close friend as you mentioned and it, and at the bottom the, at the bottom line of the hadith it is always good to be around uh, good people then it is always preferable to stay away from bad people however this does not negate the um the, the importance of da'wah right so da'wah you go, you're going to people and you're specifically you know like getting to know them right to call them to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you're not looking to just mingle you know without any purpose but you're looking to mingle right um uh, with the pure purpose and the pure and sincere purpose to pull people to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the learning points of this hadith um, and so when it comes to da'wah, right, as you get to know people to, to, to get to know their character, right, um, but you don't, you know, like get close to them in a way whereby, you know, uh, you would you would be affected or you would take on their character. Right? You, don't, you don't do that, right, but you just um, get close enough for you to be able to advise them or influence them. A person is on the religion of his close companion, so look each of you who you take as your close companion, right, so this is another, from another hadith. Right, so be very careful. Who is your companion? Um, to seek the company of the righteous, you know, so wherever you are, wherever you go, right, the first thing you should always do is seek the company of the righteous. I know the Habaib and the Hababas, right? When they when they go to any country or any land, right, the first thing that they do right, is look out for the ulama or the um the elderly of the land and go and visit them in any land. They will look out and they will go and visit them. Um, keeping the company of the righteous who have passed away by going to their graves is also counted. Right? Going to the graves and keeping the company of the righteous. Imam al Haddad, like um, the people of the people in, in his time, did not suffice his yearning um, for righteous company, so he would go to the to the to the Zambal and he would keep the company of the people in Barzakh. Right? People, people in the grave, he would keep their company. And his Qasida, Salamun Salamun, um, it was basically him writing for them, the people of the Barzakh. And he would actually study with them, people of Barzakh, people of who are in the graves. And that was his company. You know, and, and if you can't find good company around you, you know, or if you're far from people who are good company, then good company comes in the form of lectures, good company comes in the form of books. And in fact, this is all for forms of purer good company because you have no fear of lectures or books um backbiting or lying or doing or, or showing bad bad behavior right but it's all pure inside so company you can expand you can expand your understanding of good company to be beyond human beings but what human beings have left behind so you want to keep the good company of Rasulullah you are doing you are you are you are studying his hadith therefore you have kept his company you want to keep the good company of of um uh, Imam al Haddad right go and learn his books keep the company of Imam al Ghazali go and learn his books and so on I right? stay away far away from bad company and never underestimate the harm right from bad company um never ever underestimate the harm of, of bad company because how many people have been destroyed just because they got close to people right, who were non-righteous human beings right? may allah help us and protect us abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reported the next hadith um hadith 92 and Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal yunkahu al mar'atu li arba' lima li maliha wa li hasabiha wa li jamaliha wa li diniha fadfar bi dhat al din taribat yadak muttafaqun alayh sayna Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reported that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said a woman is married for four things for her wealth for her lineage for her beauty and for her piety Hold on to the pious, may you be blessed. The last part of, you know, um, there are many, many different interpretations of what that means. So some will say, um, this means, you know, your hands will be blessed. And then some say, your, your hands will, will perish if you do not hold on to the one with, with, with religion. Basically, the encouragement here is to go for those with religion, right? Never to underestimate the importance of religion. And here it makes, um, you know, as Sheikh Munir mentioned, that in, if, if you saw the, the way of the Bible, the, 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 the video Shemunir he mentioned right that um it is an understood in our religion 
is and also in our religion um that marriage it is to spread islam <laughs> right the whole point of marriage it is to strengthen someone's islam right to to have to make more muslims right in this in this world and um to spread the word of islam that is the whole point of marriage right to build an institution right uh, on which you know great human beings can be or true which great human beings can be um nurtured so he so the first part of, of the hadith he's he's stating a statement as a matter of fact Right. So some people, they misunderstand this hadith. They think that, you know, it's a commandment, right, that, that a woman should be married for these four things and especially her piety. No, right, the hadith is actually a statement. Right? It's just a statement. It's a matter of fact that women are married for these reasons, you know, and all of these reasons, they, um, three out of four, they perish. Right? Three out of four perish and only one is everlasting. So go for the one that is everlasting if you are wise. Right? Don't go for what is, is temporary or what perishes if uh, because that will be foolishness. So a woman is married for four things, right? For her wealth, right? Because is for her wealth, right? So her her money, right? So and, and why would a man marry a woman for her wealth? He has to support her anyway, right? So the answer is, you know, he's hoping that if she has wealth, that he does not actually have um if he has wealth right he does not he does not actually doesn't need to um he does not need to uh support her right uh so much or if she has wealth he does not need to actually um or, or maybe after she passes away you know how they always say that women marry men so that they can they can inherit from him when he passes away um the other way is true as well you know a man can inherit a man can a man can um uh marry a woman you know and uh a man can marry a woman right and uh uh wanting her wealth like her inheritance you know it's possible right? it's possible as well right so <laughs> it's not always just one way whereby gold diggers are a woman there could be a gold digger who's a man <laughs> if he thinks that he'll outlive his woman um for her for her, and sometimes it's it's like for her wealth like to show her off that she wears branded stuff and she's like, she's like fancy and stuff but then again he's gonna he's just asking for trouble for himself um that she has to support that kind of lifestyle <laughs> um for lineage uh, uh and within lineage you to extend the meaning of lineage it means popularity because lineage basically means she has a name right? she's a name for herself she's from you know the daughter of so and so and so on um of course if her lineage is it of the righteous then that is a reason um to want to marry her and that would fall under under piety it will not fall under lineage it will fall under piety right so if someone like say oh this is the daughter of of course it was the companions the daughter of Rasulullah everyone vied for it everyone tried to marry it Zahara, because daughter of the prophet which means that she is a righteous woman she is pious right so they're going for her piety you know um or if you know this is the, the, the son of al Habib Umar or this daughter of al Habib Umar or his granddaughter and so on like people will run after will run after this kind of lineages you know as, as what people used to do and when it when many women would would would, would um offer to marry Sayyidina al Hassan, right? Um, uh, because they want to carry the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? So her lineage is of a reason why someone might marry her, right? But if the lineage is to link you to what is pious or what is righteous, then that falls under piety. But if the lineage is just to be, you know, like like and you want fame, for example, you want to marry the president's daughter, or you want to marry, you know, the the king's daughter, or whatever, you know, or you want to marry the daughter of this uh, of this celebrity and so on, and right? then that is a uh, blameworthy, and that so that under that under under that the word popularity comes. So you marry someone because of their popularity, and right? that is blameworthy. So for her beauty, I um there are men who marry women for their beauty, and that is the most foolish thing to do because the beauty goes away <laughs> and the beauty disappears very quickly. And how many women who are so beautiful on the outside? They are ugly and they are wretched on the inside. So, um, here's the reason why, right? As I mentioned just now, right? Uh, why people might seek a woman in these reasons, right? So, wealth, someone with wealth seeking not to pay so much for, for her or seeking her inheritance. Lineage, many people might um want her because she is popular so they want to show off to others this is my wife terrible reason terrible reason um beauty you know outward or superficial beauty it goes away and then you lose your interest in her and right? you want something that is that is um forever right? and that would be um in all aspects of the religion of the village of religious understanding 
um, a religion, right? So basically, in her character, in her worship, in her piety, in her fear of Allah subhanahu wa taala, in her taqwa, in her sabr, in her shukr. So every aspect of the religion. So as many as many as as possible. Of course, I know not. I mean, nobody's perfect, right? Of course. Um, and especially at a young age of twenty to get married, or twenty four, twenty five to get married, right? Definitely, people are not. Um, you know, they're not. They're not perfect in their religion, right? But it's, they need to have a good attitude. Right, so so someone might not have you know like like you know a lot of knowledge, but they have a good attitude about studying their religion. All right, so that's why uh, you know women are married for uh for things, you know. And the story of a man is for wise, but I will tell the story later because I want to finish the, the hadith that for today. Then when I have time, I'll come back to the stories. Okay, as you mentioned earlier, <laughs> this is how we're gonna do things. Um, Bismillah, so that we don't fall back on our hadith. We only have one more week, you know, and we have to finish up to the hundred and twelve. Hadith, which is Allah can, I hope can. Okay, learning points, seeking the companionship of one of religion is always priority because this would affect her char the character and the blessings from them and their lifestyle, right? So, so when you see someone of religion, right, your life also changes because they have a lifestyle and they have a way, you know, in the way that they they, they present themselves, right? When they when when they cook, when they clean, when uh, when when they're around the house doing dhikr and so on, you are affected by the way they carry, they carry out their lives. So you're affected by the way they live their lives. Right? And that will um and that will affect your life. You know, you, you get better inshallah. Religion is always first over everything else. So for anything in life, right, if you have to choose, always go with religion first. And right? what brings you whatever brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The happiness of a person and his reputability is dependent on him always choosing Islam or his religion over everything else, right? So if you want to become always happy, you know, always tranquil, then to choose your religion over everything else, to do something only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to live only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? To want to be with someone only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. All right, the next hadith, hadith 93, right? Um, hadith 93, عن أبي سعيد عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا طغي رواه أبو داود وترمذي بإسناد لا بأس به نعرض بأي أبو سعيد الخضري رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said only keep the company of a believer and let only a God-fearing person eat your meals. I narrated by Imam Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi. Right, so, it, um, mashallah, what does this hadith mean? Only keep the company of the of a believer. Does this mean that I can't have friends of disbelievers? The answer here is the word sahab, the word sahaba or sahib, right? As sahib meaning like a close, like to keep his company so much, right? That you get influenced by this person, right? A sahib, right? Someone's always with you. Um, so if you want to keep that, if you want to spend time with someone, then spend time with a believer because inshallah, the goodness of this believer will rub off on you. And it will influence you, right? So when we say a believer, we mean a righteous, you know, practicing believer, not like a sinful believer, right? So to keep the, the company of those who are righteous, so you will learn to be like them, right? And then the second part of the hadith is and let those with taqwa, right, those or those who have who are God fearing, uh, to eat your meals. So does this mean that I don't give charity charity to anybody else? The answer is no. Again, you see in the sunnah, we see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, giving charity to the poor, to the to the uh, Muslim, the non-Muslim, he gives charity to all. So, 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 right. So, but what does this hadith mean? It means that you know, if you if you only have a small amount, right, of of, of food, or if you want to give out in charity, right, then you know, have a priority for people who are who are doing uh, work in the religion. Right, who are doing work in the religion, right? So those who are doing da'wah, right? Those who are fighting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on, right? So give them um your charity or your food or your money, right? Because these people, they are doing a lot of work for the religion and so therefore they're using your food, right? As nourishment for themselves to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to do or what Allah loves from them. You know, mashallah, and you get and you get a portion in that, you know, mashallah, you actually get a portion, right? In what they, in what they do. Okay, Alhamdulillah, it is not allowed to fight. Uh, so, sorry, let, me, let, me go, let me speak about the, the companion Abu Sa'id. Uh, Abu Sa'id Sa'id bin Malik al-Khudri is a well-known companion of those who narrate hadith. 
And so he was not allowed to fight at Uhud eh, because he was 13 years old. He was a very young Sahabi. Eh? So at Uhud he was 13. And after the battle, Rasulullah went for him and gave him personal and gave him personally the dua for gave personally his dua for his father who had been marched. He made dua for Abu Sa'id al Khudri when he uh, because his father had been marched in the battle of Uhud. He was a person of great patience and struggled. He used to tie stones to his stomach due to hunger. Once his family sent him to Rasulullah to ask for food because he was so hungry. And he said, I went to Rasulullah and he was giving a sermon. So I stopped and I listened to him and I heard him say, Whoever is patient, Allah will grant him patience. Whoever is sufficed by what he has, Allah will enrich him. And whoever has asked to shyness and dignity, Allah will make him dignified. Allah has not given a slave, a slave provision that is wider than patience. So he didn't about patience from that one hadith. MashaAllah. And he did not ask, you know, to ask for food. He narrated a thousand one hundred and seventy hadiths. Okay, the hadith explanation, this will be uh, this will be close companionship, right? So when he says illa I do not keep the close companionship except of a believer. Because necessarily as a Muslim, as you go towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in life, right? You you necessarily, you know, you need people around you who are praying, who are fasting, who are doing dhikr, and because your entire life will be this. Right? As you move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your entire life will revolve around your prayer and your fasting and your zikr. Right? So how would it, how will you be close to someone who does, who does not share, you know, activities that make up, you know, a, a, a huge percentage or a huge bulk of your life? You know, subhanAllah. So general company with non-Muslim is okay, right? But close, uh, close but it affects your schedule or it affects your worship, then no. Right. Um, and then again, it can be extended to Muslims that are not practicing, right? Because then, um, like they will influence you to watch a movie, or they will influence influence you, you know, to 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 you know go to a place, a party, or something, and a lot of a lot of sins and waste time and so on, right? So, um, food to nourish a person for worship, right? Food is to nourish a person for worship. So it is always best to give people to give food to people who are on the path of da'wah and they are performing a lot of good deeds, right? Because then this food that you're giving them will nourish their body to do what is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, right, just because he said something, it does not mean that the opposite is haram. It doesn't mean that, right? So it doesn't negate giving food to just anyone. You can give to just anyone if you want to, it's up to you, right? But um, this hadith is specifically about keeping the good company of people. The learning points of the hadith is the commandment to keep the company of those with taqwa and mixing with them, right? So look for those with taqwa, those with fear of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are safest, right, with them, right? You are safest with them. You know, mashallah. Uh, Allahumma sadi ala sayyidina Muhammad. Naam, you are safest with them. Right, so the learning points of this hadith. The commandment to keep company of the Taqwa and mixing with them, um, prevention on loving and being close to um to disbelievers because it affects you. It does affect you. Of course, you know, if they if they're your family, you know, if they are your neighbors, then um to keep a com to keep their company, right? But to be to be wary, to be honest of wariness, right? That you don't um be influenced, right, by by a lifestyle that is that is, that is not, you know, focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, to try and give charity to those who would use it well, right? To give charity to those who... So if you know someone is doing a lot of work, right, in the religion, then charity to this person is a priority. Okay, the next hadith, and I think this hadith is all... Um, I have not re read... Hey, yeah, I read this one. So, okay, when I read the new ones, then I'll do the slot, inshallah. An Abi Hurairata radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal ar-rajilu ala dini khalili فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ رواه أبو داود وترمذي بإسناد صحيح وقال ترمذي حديث حسن Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying a man follows his friend's religion so you should be careful who you take for friends narrated by Abu Dawud and Tirmizi and who classified the hadith as Hassan you know mashallah so this is all in the same you know chapter in the same understanding right that that companionship matters you know it really affects a person right so and it does it really does you know even the way you speak like the way you think, like the way you sit, the way you walk, like your likes and dislikes is heavily influenced by the people 
whom you hold dear to you when you hold close to you, you know, mashallah. You know, and this is why the earlier hadith you know, spoke about, uh, you know, um, um, uh, choosing the one of religion as a spouse because your spouse is also your companion and your spouse is a continuous, constant companion through the day, right? So your spouse is, you know, mashallah, um, uh, your spouse is, 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 uh, your spouse is with you the whole day. So if your spouse is someone who would commit sins or watch, you know, movies that are, or play video games that are they're just wasting their time and wasting their time, you know, or they would do things that are that are sinful, right? And then you get influenced into doing what they are doing, right? Then that is a bad that, that is bad company. Right. So you know, mashallah. So the spouse is one of your he is your company, right? She is your company. Your your children, they are your company, your parents, your your fa your family, your elders, these are all your company. So be very careful. The word here is khalil. Right? Khalil is from the word khalal. Right? Khalal will be gaps, right? So so the khalil is the one who goes right into the depths of your heart. You know, and he sits in the gaps, right, in your heart. So he's that close to you. He's so close, right? That, that when when he's not around, when she's not around, you miss them, and right? you miss them terribly. That is called a khalil, right? someone who's so 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 close to you, and right? that is a khalil of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam is the khalil of Allah, right? The khalil of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, meaning right, that he is always, always, always with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There is not a single gap in his life. Whereby he is not, you know, um, focused or you know, present with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that is the meaning of Khalilullah. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also um, Khalilullah. You know, Mashallah. Uh, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right. So, it, uh, so, 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 a rajul wa ala dini Khalili. Right? A man is on the religion of his Khalil, like his close. You will say the bosom friend, right? You will say Khalil means bosom, like bosom friend. Um, Falian, so, so be very careful who's your Khalil. Be very careful whom you allow to enter into the depths of your heart. I right? don't just allow anyone right to come into the depths of your heart, but it has to be some it has to be someone who is um you know who who has to be someone who would influence you, you know, because they become the whispers, you know, in your heart. Right? They become the whispers in your heart, right? This person who is your uh this person who is your Khalil. Right, they, they they make up the whispers in your head and in your heart. The one who is the khalil, uh, uh, and and here the word is deen, right? He is, you know, uh, you are you are on a deen of your khalil. So deen here it means religion, but it's, it also means specifically the way of life, right? Because Islam is our deen, it is our way of life, right? So so basically habits, yeah, habits, way of life, way of thinking, right? So if your khalil, you know, does all kinds of things that is. That is good. That goes for classes. He goes for he does zikr in Quran and so on. And he does a lot of good things. And you will be, you know, you will be, uh, you you tend to follow, right? Your Khalil, right? In his good deeds, right? But however, if he does bad things, you tend to follow him as well because you are close. So whenever he wants to go and you know, like go for some party or whatever, he will invite you, you know. But if he's someone who's who's going for a majlis, he will invite you, you know. Mashallah. Right? So this is a hadith never to um underestimate. So we went through what is the Khalil is of of course from the Jawami al Karim of the Prophet at Tabi Yasrikotibaa, right? Character steals from character. Right? Character steals from character. So be very careful, be very wary right, about this. Because no matter what no matter what if, if you spend enough time with a person, right, you will uh, unfortunately, you know, you will take from the that person's character. Those who sit together become like each other. Al Jalis, Al Jalis, Right in Arabic, it says those who sit together they are like each other. If you spend time long enough with one another, you become become similar. And we see this very clearly in TV shows. Right, children who who, who keep watching like you know certain, certain TV shows like cartoons and sitcoms and so on. Right, they tend to copy. <laughs> they tend to copy what they see, which is a calamity. I think it's a calamity they copy what they see, you know, and then they, they speak in the way these people speak, you know, and they even use words that they, they this will use. It's not, you know, it's not righteous, right, words to use, right? And the companion he proves, the sahib sahib, right? The companion, whether whether you whether you like it or not, the companion proves you wherever he goes, right? So so seek good companionship, you know, um, because the companion can pull the person towards towards good or towards evil, right? So be very, very, you know, uh, very, be very cautious. The learning points from this hadith is to seek good companions, right? To always seek good companions, 
Um, and if you're going to be close to someone, right, uh, then allow for them uh, and then seek someone who is very, very righteous for you to be close to. A person will imitate the one that they keep company, company with without realizing they are actually imitating. And how many times the way you speak is exactly the way like your best friend speaks or the way your husband speaks or the way your you know your 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 your, your mother speaks you know a lot of us we speak the same way the way our our parents speak right? because we imitate and right? we actually we actually without realizing we we are copying the way they do things i think this had it seriously and implemented as it has saved and also destroyed many people you know and and the writers they know Right, that that uh, this this is the very hadith that have destroyed many many people, um, who take the path off or who who make friends with those who are wretched, and it has saved many. In fact, it has, it has even brought people into wilaya, you know, into into being a in being a wali, you know, uh, uh, into wilaya, mashallah, into being a wali, um, uh, just because they kept the company of the awliya. You know, mashallah, and we mentioned this about about um that yesterday about the ziara, you know, when we spoke about um uh Shimon Mihdar, if I'm not wrong, I whereby he would do um, you know, of his of his in one breath, he's able to do, you know, a, a thousand times, you know, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And his servant, uh, because being around him so much, he could do up to five hundred, you know, times, you know, of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one breath, in one breath. You know, mashallah. Um, and it is it's so so it's really, you know, the, the, you keep the good the company of the good people and you yourself will be good. If anyone struggles with istiqama, you know, being consistent, then you need good company. You just need to find someone who says good company to you, you know, and um, you know, and and, and have the influence right from there. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli wa Muhammad. Okay, uh, mashallah. And the next hadith is Al-Mar'u Ma'aman Ahab. Before going to the next hadith, right, there's one story that I okay, I'll tell other one story first. Right, about, uh, like, it just occurred to me before I forget. Al-Habib uh, Ali Al-Habshi. I have Ali Al-Habshi. You know, mashallah, the great, of the great saints, great awliya, you know, in the in the Hadrami tradition. Habib Ali Al-Habshi. Um, Allahumma salli wa sallam Muhammad. There was once, you know, Habib Ali, and because this, this story is with respect to the one about um the mask the smell of mask and smell of um the what do you call it the 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 the, the, the blacksmith right so i didn't have she you know he enters he he goes to a fishmonger a fishmonger he has fish you know all around him and his shop smells of uh fish right? and fish is not a very nice smell if it's not if it's not cooked right um so he enters the shop and have Ali al habshi you know mashallah because he's he's so pure and then so righteous, and the angels are always with him. When he entered the shop, the fishmonger perceived that you know that the the, the the smell of the fish disappeared, and the and the smell of the fish was replaced with the smell of um uh, of of musk, right? From by by because Habib Ali Al Habshi entered the shop, right? So the fishmonger knows this is not this is not normal, and the fishmonger he figures out that Habib Ali Al Habshi is a is a wali. <laughs> Is amongst the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the fishmonger says to Habib Ali, Habshi, come to my house. I, I want to invite you to my house. You know, uh, you're someone special. I want to invite you to my house. So straight away, he jumped at the opportunity to, to keep someone's good company. So Habib Ali, Habshi, you know, um, accepted um, the, 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 the invitation and he went to this fishmonger's house. Right. So in this fishmonger's house, you know, Habib Ali, Habshi, he mentioned to the fishmonger, you know, you know, like, how did you, like, you know why do you invite me over to your house? And he said, you know my my shop smells like 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 fish all the time. But when you entered, I could smell the smell of musk. You know overtook my you know the smell of the fish. So I knew you were someone special to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know uh, you are a wali. Right? And Habib Ali Al Habshi he knows that not everyone can smell you know the angels that are around him. It takes a special person <laughs> to actually smell the angels around him. So he says to the fishmonger, and you are also a wali. Right, because you can smell my smell, you know, around me, but I can't smell your smell around you. Now, you can smell my smell, and I can't smell your smell, which means that you are above me. You know, you're above me in your in your position. When he asked the fishmonger, he said, "So, can you tell me? Right, can you tell me? You know, um, like how do you reach that level? You know, mashallah. Right, and the fishmonger, right, he said, he said." This is something that is between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not concern you. 
<laughs> it does not concern you. I, but 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 all I wanted to do was to keep the company of someone who was righteous. And mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> like, and mashallah, and of course the the, the story of 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 Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. You know, when when Rasulullah asked him to follow him on his hijrah, and he said, "As Sahaba ya Rasulullah, As Sahaba ya Rasulullah," and his eyes flooded in tears uh, out of joy to be able to keep the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, the next hadith. Abi Mas'ud al-Ash'ari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal al-mar'u ma'aman ahab muttafaqun alayhi fi, fi, is a very famous hadith, a very favorite hadith as well. You know, mashallah. So the hadith explanation, mashallah, mashallah, is a very simple, it's from a jawab and al-kalib as well. It's so simple, mashallah. It can go positive and go negative because if you love those who are wretched, you'll be with them. If you love those who are righteous, you will be with them. No, mashallah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُتِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger will be in the company of those blessed by Allah, the prophets, the people of truth, the martyrs, and the righteous and what an honorable company mashallah right, okay. if you love if you love this people you love the prophets you love the people of truth you love the martyrs you love the righteous right you'll be together with them right being the, being together does not mean being on the same level someone to say how could it be that you if you love the prophets or something you're together with him in jannah then you're the highest source of jannah but what if you're, these are not are not there the answer is being together does not mean you have the same you have the same um rewards and you have the same delights no does not mean that so it could be that, that a few people will be together in a, for example, in a restaurant, but different people get served different foods. But are they together? Yes, they are together. All right, so, so, so there are those who, you know, get, get better food and those who don't get as, bad, as, as, as good food, you know, mashallah. But they're together. So it's, it's not mustahil. It's not impossible right, for people to be together and to be of different levels as possible, right? So, so you are, with regards to your level in paradise, it is dependent on your deeds, right? So your deeds will, de will determine your level in paradise. Of course, this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith is good news to those who love those who are good. Then this hadith came, it was it, it came from a man, right? When um he uh, was worried and he came to Rasulullah and he said, yeah, yeah, Rasulullah, a man, there are a few, there are few narrations. One goes, a man, um, loves the people and he was referring to Rasulullah and the companions a man loves the people but his deeds do not match them right so what's, what's going to happen then the verse came down uh, a person is with whomsoever he loves right this Quranic verse also came down from the companions who fell sick just by the thought of not being able to be with the Prophet Sallallahu in, in Jannah and he felt so sick you know it is it is um, the, the, the Mawla of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um Thaban. Right? He felt so sick. Right? And then when 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 Rasab inquired about him and he went to see him, right? and he realized why he was that sick, then this verse came down, it was revealed, right? and he recited it in a way of joy to show that you can be with those whom you love in Jannah. The learning points of this hadith, um, the virtues of loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the righteous who are alive and have uh, and have, and have passed away. I so love all those who are righteous and good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the virtues of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet I sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to obey the commandments and stay away from their prohibitions and to behave by the laws in the Sharia. It is not a condition to act like them as if you act like them then you should you will be on your level anyway so it's not a condition that to be to be together with them that you actually have to act like them right? it's not a condition because that will mean that you'll be on your level anyway right but it just means that you love them and you just love them and you're together with them but you're at your own level in jannah it also other scholars put in that you have to have the same you have to have the same uh, aqidah as them right so if like for example you know christians when they when they claim to love nabi isa alayhi salam right but they believe that he's god so the aqidah with nabi isa is different right so therefore um their love will not bring them together with nabi isa because the aqidah is different mashallah 
Alhamdulillah um, let us uh, do our salawat Allahumma salli afdhal salawatika ala as'adi makhluqatika habibillah sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim arada ma'lumatika wa midada kalimatika kullama dhakaraka wa dhakarahu zakirun wa ghafala anzika wa zikil ghafirun Allahumma salli afdhal salawatika ala as'adi makhluqatika habibillah sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa sallim arada ma'lumatika wa midada kalimatika kullama dhakaraka wa dhakarahu zakirun wa ghafala لا عنك تقول غافي اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل افضل صلواتك على اسعد مخلوقاتك حبيب الله سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ارد معلوماتك من كلماتك كل ما ذكرك ذكرك وذكره ذاكر وغفل عنك عن ذكرك وذكر الغافي لهون جزاك الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم خيرا جزاك الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اهله جزاك الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم خيرا جزاك الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هو اهله جزاك الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم خيرا جزاك الله عنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هو اهله الفاتحة أنا الله رجلنا ونافع وعملنا خالص وسعين ودلالة الكودة ويسر بيكم النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأرواح معاني منا مشيحنا وذو الحق علينا وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته